Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast. We're here, and it's uh, it's going to be a very interesting night. Uh, I'm Sorg. I'm Mike Sorg here as usual, over on the couch, rocking it with me with us tonight from uh, the Cotton Factory. Is Rob De La Creta? Howdy. How you doing tonight, sir? I'm uh, I'm tired. I'm hungry. Uh, it's hot. <laughs> I have a lot of things to complain about, but hey, I'm here. So. <laughs> hey. And, on, and at the helm is Chachi. Chachi says dot net. How you doing, sir? I'm here. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> there you go. And uh, you can see behind him, we got a special guest tonight, DJ Cutman. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Just hanging out. <laughs> this is hard to do. What are you doing? <laughs> trying to, Chachi's trying to point at him oh, for uh, for the for the video I people. I tickle his chin. Or for the audio. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. There you go. Oh, uh, this is the. There he is. There nice. He is. Oh, oh. Yes, the mic's a little. Whoa. It, the cord fell the cord out. The cord fell out of the did, mic. You didn't put it in the whole way. Like, it was in, but it wasn't clicked in. That's all right. So. That's fine. <laughs> but I That's went to adjust fine. the mic. Everything. It just the fell studio's apart. falling apart. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> you, you have stumbled across the awesome cast. I'm sorry already. Uh, you can check us out at awesomecast.com. We're here live every Tuesday. 7 p.m. Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Twitter us at awesomecast or email us awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com or you can hit our voicemail line at 724-258-CAST at 724-252-2278 and be sure to find us on iTunes, Mediafly, Roku, Box. I know a lot of you watch us on that. The Blip TV and the YouTubes, it's all up there. Just look up awesomecast and we'll be one of those. We'll be the cool one that you find uh, on any of those. Uh, I'm sure that's debatable uh but anyways yeah like i said we're guests tonight dj cut man now now you are somebody i literally stumbled upon uh <clears throat> we were at baltimore comic-con and uh we had our booth for solgatron media and mang tunes and uh i had this interesting uh mix of as i was telling you kind of caribbean music from uh the peanut guy and uh and 8-bit tunes <laughs> yep. and here was you in uh, it, 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 with this amazing look, for, for can you explain your outfit for the for the audio listeners that may be listening? Well, you know, um, Cutman is from one of my favorite video games, Mega Man, and I imagine like what will Cutman doing be doing like 15 years after the game came out? You know, Mega Man's not attacking him anymore. He's probably got hobbies, right? Well, I I got a hobby of of music, so I sort of thought you know, if he had 15 years, he'd probably get like some new armor or something. So I like put this together. <laughs> Got the scissors to represent, and and the helmet changed to a record instead of like you know those scissors on his head, you know. So I don't know, man. It just sort of happened organically. A fan built the pieces for me, and it just felt right, you know. I put it on, I just felt at home, and it's kind of where it all came from. Wow. Uh, now you know, say you're you're a DJ. Uh, you have a for those that don't know, uh, you know, there's this really is this really interesting uh, community of like the eight bit music. Um, and, and can you, can you kind of explain like, well, how did you come into that and, uh, uh explain, explain what, uh, it, chip tunes, I believe is referred to, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Chip tunes or chip music. Well, I always had liked like classic game music. It was kind of like a guilty pleasure of mine. And when I was growing up, I was collecting Japanese game soundtracks like Final Fantasies and stuff like that, just cause I liked to listen to it. And I don't know, I was a weird kid. That's what I wanted to hear, you know, and, and. About a few years ago, I found this community, 8bitcollective.org or 8bc.org, where a bunch of people use old Game Boys, uh, Amigas, Commodore 64s. They've hacked and circumvent these machines to write music, and they're writing new music that sounds like old game music. And as soon as I heard it, I was like hooked. And I just started downloading all this music and listening to it and be like, man, I wish I could go out somewhere and like hear this at like, a show. But I was living in upstate New York at the time. There was nothing like it. So I figured, you know, what the hell i guess i'll just put an hour of my favorite stuff together and go out on the street and play this music i just took my i packed up my cat carrier with my with my computer speakers and i went out and i plugged into like one of the public outlets and i just started playing this music through my laptop speakers you know mm -hmm. just like i don't know i wanted to hear it out i wanted to get it out so that's what i just started doing granted i didn't have the armor back then but um <laughs> yeah that's where it all kind of happened i was doing that for maybe about three or four weeks i got booked at a waffle place 
waffle place like hey it's really cool you're doing some stuff you want to come into our waffle place and play in there and i was like sure uh three years later waffle. here i am <laughs> how does how does how does 8-bit music uh go over in the uh in the in the waffle house crowd if people are initially confused, most people are initially confused, <laughs> or initially enthralled. I, okay. was, I was the latter. But yeah, most people are just like, what game is this from? I get that question a lot. And it's like, when I tell them that it's not from a game, it's like an original music made with an old Game Boy or with like a Commodore 64. Mm. So it's always like this moment of like, uh, I don't know what he just said to me. Like, I don't know. <laughs> but it, over time, man, it's catchy. It's got a good beat. It, it It's fun. So uh, people warm up to it. And I've been playing, the more I play it, the more I play it out, the more I've seen people getting into it, um, hitting me up on Facebook and being like, hey, what was that song? It sounded like Mega Man. It's like, well, uh, let's figure it out. And, um, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Now, um, I mean, they say I saw you at, at the Baltimore Comic Con. You were at a, a tremendous booth, a, great, a tremendous artist doing uh, pixel art of, of, of various fashions. I uh, had a, a chance to talk to them. Actually, those interviews will be coming up on SorgatronMedia.com uh, in the coming weeks. Um, so, uh, how did you hook up with that? And, and, and uh, do you have any problems playing music in the middle of a Comic Con like that? Oh, I, I, I have had. Uh, one or two run-ins with the non-musically mm-hmm. inclined at, at particular conventions. But most of the time, most people are, are really cool and enjoy, you know, sitting at a booth all weekend, um, you yeah. know, sort of quiet or in the noise of a convention hall. It's kind of nice to have somebody <laughs> playing music. Um, I know when I went to my first convention, I, was, uh, I wasn't I was DJing then, but uh, there was one booth that had music, and I remember just sort of hanging out around it, like listening to the music. And um, that's what I found a bunch of other people kind of do with my booth now. Uh, just sort of hang out and listen. But uh, the guys that I was with, we were like the 8-bit trifecta, or the, the 8-bit triforce. We got Square Painter, who does all hand-painted uh, sprites and scenes from old video games, and Pixel Papa, who does all bead sprites, and like those, you know what I'm talking about, like those cool little bead sprites uh, that look 8-bit. And uh, yeah, those are just both buddies that I met at the MAGFest convention two years ago, and we were just like, hey, we're all in the similar area let's get together and go to cons it's fun and that's kind of where it was magfest isn't that the one in dc we were looking at josh i don't know if you're looking at it but you should be because <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I don't remember what that one was called but i remember the time that we were looking at it it was right after new york yeah yeah like we literally would get back from new york comic-con and have and to out, yeah. yeah and have to pack a repack and go straight to DC. <laughs> and I know at the time both of our work schedules wouldn't have. Yeah, time, yeah, so. yeah. So I mean, well, wait, wait, explain Magfest for those that don't know. I would love to explain. Magfest <laughs> is where I want to go when I die because it's a twenty-four <laughs> hour. It's it's a whole weekend. It's a long weekend, and it's twenty-four hours. It never closes. Video game and music convention. Mag is uh, the music uh, and gaming festival so they have video game cover bands from around the country bands like protoman power glove all play there um they have a 24-hour like huge uh free play arcade that just never oh, shuts man. down you can like you know See, hang I'm out and sold. go to sleep at one in the morning wake up at five in the morning in a cold sweat and be like i need to play street fighter right now and you can go down and just do it and and other people are there doing it and uh they have a lot of awesome chiptune musicians this year and uh, it's from January 5th to January 8th, I believe, at the Gaylord um, Convention Center in Virginia. <laughs> thing. I know, it's funny. Um, <laughs> Magfest.org, though, is the, uh, is the website. And those guys are awesome to organize. And I'll be playing this year. And it's really, it's the best. It's the best. <laughs> Excellent. I got it up right here. Uh, yeah, Magfest.org. I think their, mm-hmm. their website definitely uh, upgraded a bit there. Um, I love I love the the video game culture. That's I mean, we, you know, we talk about we were at Comic Con and, and the geek culture going on there. But uh, you know, it, it seems that there's been a renaissance of the video game culture, the old school culture, uh, as far as that goes. Um, but well, I mean, well, I mean, well, well I'm, I'm, you know, relating this to uh, video games live is a big thing. I know we we attended yeah. both shows here in Pittsburgh. We were huge fans of it. Uh, you're starting to see more of this go, come up where like you know, symphonies are doing they're doing the run of uh, the Zelda music. Uh, yeah. For the 25th anniversary, Final Fantasy's had a tour around the world. Uh, I saw something else that looks like video games live that somebody else is doing. So I mean, that is becoming a huge thing. Are, are you are you into the kind of those those uh, you know big big productions that they're doing these days? 
It's really cool. I haven't had a chance to make it to one. I was going to mm-hmm. go see the Final Fantasy when they were playing in Baltimore, but I had a show the same uh, night. I played BitGen Gamer Fest, which is also an awesome, uh, awesome video game music tribute. I just got an email that the London Philharmonic is doing a set, or I guess you wouldn't call it a yeah. set. Probably yeah. some fancy classical word of of all video game tunes. My dad sent to me. He's like, "Hey, you're into this game stuff, right? Check it out." <laughs> and it's like Zelda, Mario, you know, all all this awesome stuff being played by these world class musicians. And I think it's cool because a lot of the composers, you know, are really amazingly talented composers, and their music doesn't break out of their cartridges. You know what mm-hmm, I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like one of the things that I took on with Cutman. Is I was like, I really love the music to Chrono Trigger. You know, Mitsuda, he's an awesome composer, but most people have never heard of his name or never heard of his music outside of, like, Super Nintendo. So I have yeah. to take that music and sort of bring it to another audience. And that was interesting when we went, because, like, it, it, they go through stuff, and, and one, you you saw that mix. Like, there was the, you know, obvious us who were big fans, you know. Not everybody's really dressed up for the symphony, which is kind of interesting. Um, and and But then you'll have, like, the, the older people that definitely didn't play video games. That kind of probably got this on their season pass with the uh, CLO or something, uh, but they're and they're really getting into it. I love the crossover they're having there, and and to hear something like you know you mentioned Chrono Trigger. I mean when they start playing, you know uh, they, they played they played Final Fantasy, which I know when they did the uh, uh, the Final Fantasy Seven song, they you know the crowd went nuts. But they did another one. I I want to say it's like a Chrono Trigger that they did right, and and again you know. It, Something I've never heard, you know, but 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 a tremendous set nonetheless. So um, you know, what's really funny. What's that? Is that uh, he said he wants to get a mag fest when he dies, <laughs> and I've been waiting for a break in the conversation to point this out. But um, if we went to mag fest, I probably would die because you yeah. play for. I wouldn't sleep. How many days is it again? <laughs> it's like four days. I yeah, it's think. like yeah, four I, days. I, they would have to drag me out of the arcade. Mm-hmm. As I'm passed out on top of a machine. Mm-hmm. The great thing about Magfest is there's probably chairs that you could just sleep for a few hours. I remember like <laughs> what's the opposite of blacking out? I like came to at five a.m. and I was playing Street Fighter. I must have napped at some point. Just what like uh, staying on Ryu just for a few hours and come back and I was playing Street Fighter. It was it was awesome. <laughs> tremendous, tremendous. Um... <laughs> Uh, geez. Uh, speaking of, uh, of, you know, playing for long hours, Ch- yeah, Chachi here, of course, he has his 24-hour marathon uh, that we've been, I think we're turning into an annual event. Uh, you have, you've had some experience with uh, Child's Play, actually, which we're big fans of uh, here on the network. Uh, can you talk, tell us about, uh, that was back in April, I believe. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that experience and how that went? Oh, yeah. Well, um, this was my first official uh, run working with another organization and contributing to Child's Play. I heard about Child's Play at uh, MAGFest, full circle, huh? Um, <laughs> that it, this was a game, a game industry charity that's giving sick kids in hospital care, which is awesome, but also um, video games. You know, they're in the hospitals for however long their sickness needs them to be, and they're bringing them DSs and stuff like this to, like, make their lives better. And I thought, well, hey, this is really awesome. So uh, I, I did a bundle of cover songs that uh, we were calling the Chip 2 Hero Bundle, and with uh, my partners over at Yamaha.net, we uh, raised over $600 for the charity nice. um, over the course of a, of a 10-day sale. So it was really uh, it was really awesome, and I'm looking forward to uh, future opportunities that I'm going to have to raise money, and I want to help contribute with music uh, to this to this awesome organization. Excellent, excellent. So um, I want to say, you know, let's throw this out. Uh, I, you know, kind of a, uh, a get to know you question. Uh, aside from Mega Man, what's your favorite video game? Oh, you know, you think that <laughs> I would have a have an answer for this, but I love Mega Man and all of them. But okay, no, I do have an answer. It's a Legend of Zelda: A Link to the Past. I excellent. could just continuously play that game through. I don't know what it is about it. But uh, I just love that game, man. I just can't get enough of it. It's in my Super Nintendo in the living room right now. Excellent. Excellent. Warmed up, ready to go. Excellent. Uh, well, hey, DJ Cut, man. Yo, throw out. This is your chance. What's coming up for you? Uh, where can people find out your stuff? It, it, throw it out there, man. Oh, well, djcutman.com is my website. There's a bunch of links there. Also, you can find me on SoundCloud and Facebook, facebook.com slash djcutman. I post almost all of my music up there for free. Mm. Uh, a tremendous amount of my music. Free, free, free. Take it, love it, listen to it. 
Um, I have a new album coming out um, this year, Game Chops Volume 2. Game Chops is a collection of video game music that I've reworked and produced into like full beats. So I sample the original tunes and I layer drums, bass, uh, other arrangement over it. So I kind of fill it out to, uh, to sound like a modern beat, but it's classic game music. Uh, and uh, my next big show... Um, is MAGFest, man. It's, it's, I got a few here's and there's. You can find them on my Facebook page. But if you like anything about me or you hate me and you want to throw something at this armor, then come to MAGFest because it's awesome. And uh, I'm going to be playing there. It's going to be great. How big of impact can the, can the armor take? I don't know, man. This is going through <laughs> a lot of cons with me. I think I accidentally like ran over one of my friends like full steam with it. And uh, it's in pretty good shape, you know, cosmetically at least. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot. Check him out. And hey, MagFest.org, he's he's number one on the list for bands. So go check that out if you're in the, uh, what was that, the D.C. area. Uh, go see that. We have some friends in Baltimore that need to check you out. Uh, so uh, go check that out. Thanks a lot, man. All right. Thanks so much. So thanks, DJ Cutman, for joining us. Uh, it, it, it was uh, Go check him out, DJCutman.com. So to keep with the theme, Chachi... You know, GameStop we've been talking about a lot lately. <laughs> He's already shaking his head. It's like, no, no. You know, okay, so this is this is how somebody put this. GameStop, you have to give them credit because they're doing stuff. So they're not going to just die like Borders as a brick-and-mortar store. You know, they're doing the direct downloads like Steam and all that. Uh, and, you know, the, hence the problem with Deus Ex where they pulled the coupons online. Oh, no, from wait, live. no, stop. Okay, okay, okay. All right, you, you, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, he's got to enhance his calm. Okay, GameStop is on the list with Sony. Okay, and you just called them or referred to them as being like Steam. No, 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 no. no. Their service is terrible. It doesn't work. The, the direct download. Yes, you it doesn't work. Okay, okay. Well, I know, but I, okay. Just it, it just just because there's an Android tablet doesn't mean that it's as good as the iPad, you know. And just because they have a direct download service doesn't mean it's as good as Steam. I'm just saying they're trying stuff outside the box, and they're not just going to be another failing brick and mortar that fades away like everybody else, like most of the book business. Um, well, now what they're doing is they're you know we talked a little bit about Amazon's going to do their own kind of exclusive Android tab. GameStop is going to be doing uh, the the Android tablet, apparently, that uh, it looks like it's going to be a lot like, kind of like what Amazon's doing. It's going to be a, a custom thing. Uh, they're <laughs> they're going to try to deliver games to it. There's there's word that they're going to be uh, they're going to be pushing games directly, exclusively for their tablet. There's supposed to be a controller that's being worked on for it. Uh, this is, I mean, this is a really interesting look to, to throw everybody in the in the uh, in the GameStop world here. Can they? I, 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 I can't see them doing it. They're not. I, I can see Amazon doing this. This image says it all. This image says it. What does it say there? I traded in three games for seven fifty. <laughs> Yo, know, can you trade in your old uh, Android OS games? And would they be worth anything? No. Well, then again, nobody buys Android OS games. Right. Or, They're all free. Yeah. The, 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 the ones anybody wants. Um, so this is an interesting take. Uh, what, what do you guys think of this? I mean, do you think... One, is, is GameStop the company to pull something like this off? Nope. Nope. I mean, not nope. even with their brand name. I mean, granted, like, it's kind of tainted for us, but they're still kind of the last retailer standing as far as an exclusive game store. Is, uh, it, is uh, that enough? No, it's not. They're, they're I mean, still, no, their site's They're bad. still going to fail. Okay. I mean, that's all there is to it. They're they're still going to fail. Um, yeah, I mean, it's an inevitable thing where, like, I mean, the company may succeed, but they will not succeed in brick and mortar. It's no. just yeah. those things where they need to evolve with what the market is doing. And it's a big chance that they're going to throw their hat in, in dig, you know, digital like they are. I mean, uh, considering how they how they deal with, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, it, how they deal with um, their customers on a one on one basis, you know, what are they going to do digitally, you know? So, Josh, hit uh, Window D on that keyboard. Sorry okay. about that. Um, we're having all kinds of tech problems tonight. Yeah, which one is it? Uh, the middle one. No, the top one. Sorry, we lost Rob a second video-wise, but that's there our fault. Go. Uh, you're good, Rob. You're all good, Rob. I thought I heard rain is why I'm 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm easily distracted. That's all right. I got them on one screen. I don't have them on the other, but that's fine. All right. Um, everybody knows his name, so everybody knows his name. Yeah. <laughs> it's but, awesome. Uh, I, I don't Everybody's know, but, but it's going to be a huge transition, and 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 it's going to be a real. I mean, a lot, a lot of these are doing it. You know, Bar Barnes and Noble went online, and they're doing pretty okay with their Nook. But it's a big chance, and especially if they're going to tr transition. Well, hopefully, eventually, exclusively over to this, like you know, something like Amazon has, but they start from scratch, of course. You know, how can they compete like tra transitioning their old their old systems? This they're not going to mm -hmm. with the. Oncoming on with the the coming onslaught of people realizing that they can sell their games on Amazon or yeah. other online markets, and don't forget the generational thing. I mean, the kids that are growing up these days are downloading all of their games. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, the, the physical yeah. console and uh, the physical media generation is done. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that's why everyone but Nintendo <laughs> <laughs> has online markets on their their systems. Everything yep. is right there. Well, on no, the Nintendo system. does. Nintendo is an online market. Not as good. Well, come on, for games, all they all they say they say we're a toy company. They're going to sell games. Right. That's but exactly what they're that's doing. Not enough I... to make it in this in in the current video game I think market. Nintendo's doing pretty decently. I mean, the, 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 and Nintendo's not number one, but they're not losing money by any well, means. And they're well, actually they're losing a whole lot of money every day they operate. But, are they? Um, <laughs> I mean, is that are there numbers beyond that? Or yeah, Nintendo hasn't been like actually making movement in the market for a long, long time. And when they announced the last console, it didn't <laughs> didn't prove any sparks in their value either. And okay. I'm really what the point here is like you compare the numbers of something like. Um, what uh, Microsoft is doing with the Xbox. You compare the popularity of all that with what people are doing with the Wii. I guarantee that, uh, here, let's throw out a ridiculous number. Like 60% of the people who have a Wii don't know that there's an online marketplace. Right. That's true. It's hard. It's hard to set up. It is hard to set up. It's not... Online gaming is crap on there. It always has been. It's huge. Yeah, exactly. And, that, and that's I the mean, point, that they're not yeah. doing anything good in the online space, whereas that is the bread and butter of what Microsoft is currently doing with the Xbox, and it's only a matter of time before, you know, physical media. We've had I mean, this conversation. And, and, yeah, yeah, of course. And of <laughs> course, I mean, and they're reaching out to other stuff, too. I mean, you know, I mean, remember, this is a whole other conversation we could get into. It, we were talking about Red State came out, Kevin Smith's Red State, and we talked about when the first, you know, when it first two, happened. By we, the way. Yes. It, two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. It, it, it's worth the money I paid to watch it on demand. Yeah. And it'll be worth the money I pay to watch it in a theater. Okay. And which, so it works. The, the new model works. But you know. Well, no, it's not the model itself. It's, it's the movie. The it's movie. the movie. The movie is that good okay okay now now for those who don't know it, it, what they did was they released it on demand here uh in everywhere on the xbox on amazon on 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 itunes i mean it was a ten dollar rental mind you i was even on cable it was on the cable on demand yeah uh, a ten dollar rental which you know you might scoff at to begin with but remember they're putting that online and then they're taking it out to the theater and this isn't the first movie. This is—I mean, this is the first movie, but isn't the only movie. This seems to be a new model in general. Um, there's one called—and help me if Juggalo John, if you're in the chat room, uh, it's like Dale and somebody, something versus evil. It has the guy from Reaper. Oh, Dale and Tucker. Dale and Tucker versus evil. Yeah. They're doing it the same way. It's going to be on demand for ten bucks, and then they're putting in the theaters. Maybe because these aren't kind of these are kind of not you know these aren't movies that are going to make like a hundred million dollars in the box office. Hands down, you, it's it's you not. Don't, you don't know that. I, well, they're not. If they did it the traditional way with commercials and you know the way they they push every movie into the theaters, there's no way they wouldn't have gotten the push. You don't know that. I, the I, whole thing that we 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 talked about on a previous episode of Awesome Cast mm -hmm. when it first happened was Kevin Smith giving the finger to the movie industry uh -huh. because he wasn't going to play their game anymore. Exactly. Okay. But you don't know. What would have happened had he done it in a traditional manner? Because sure. this is not, and for all the people out there uh, not wanting to see the movie because it's a Kevin Smith film, it's, it, it's not a Kevin Smith film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, he wrote it and he directed it, but this is not, it, by any means, like anything else he's ever released. But neither was Cop Out. That wasn't his movie. He directed that movie. Mm -hmm. That was it. Mm -hmm. He didn't write that movie. 
Okay. He directed that movie, which means he did what other people told him to do. This is his own creation, mm -hmm. written, produced, directed. And supported by him and his podcast network yes. and all of his efforts. Right. And it, it's not like anything else he's ever done. And it's an interesting new trend. I, I don't know. I don't know if he started that trend that, that we're seeing these other movies. I don't know what studio is doing uh, that that Dale and Tucker movie. Um, but I think it's going to be interesting. And, and you know, you know, where we were like, yeah, you know, we were talking about if our schedules would have worked out. I was like, hey, let's come over, get it on big screen. Big screen. We could split the ten bucks versus we'd be dropping, you know, what eight nine bucks a piece if we went to the theater to begin with, which we'll probably do anyways. Uh, but I just am. just for that initial checking it out. Um, I mean that's oh. that's perfect. Yes, they, there's a plug that needs plugged in. I'm forget that needs added to the checklist. Um, anyways, um, but uh, but it's interesting and, and it's right on game consoles too. So I mean that's it's uh, it's an interesting move. It, it's worth the money mm -hmm. uh, all, the whole way around because it's just one of those. And this is going to turn into a movie review, but I mean it's just <laughs> one of those movies that you're sitting there and you're into mm -hmm. because. Mm -hmm. Number one, you know who wrote it and who produced it, mm -hmm. and, and then you see what happens on screen, and you're like, no way, because then you're like, you're questioning whether or not he actually wrote and directed and produced the movie. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Speaking of Nintendo, they're mm. not doing everything wrong. The 3DS is moving off the shelf. We were talking about Nintendo like 15 minutes ago. Yeah. What are you doing? I, I'm, I'm going. I'm trying to bring it back around to the, to the script. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, we kind of expect this. 3ds is going to, you know, move if they cut 80 bucks off the price like they did. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean that kind of goes with it. I mean, if I'm like, eh, for 250 bucks, uh, uh, now now I'm like, now it's like 180. I'm like, maybe. This and, is another example of Nintendo shooting itself in the foot. You can't forget okay. that these things cost money to make, and they're conceding that their initial overhead is just. <laughs> Gonna get shot out the window, so and, now they're and gonna that's fall no further into the hole this over the 3DS. Yeah, yeah. And they're basically what's happening is what Nintendo used to be really great and really cool, sell a lot of consoles, sell a lot of games, knock the Wii out of the park or whatever. So they make this big fat profit. As time goes on, that profit is getting smaller and smaller. The more often they have to do things like cut the price on a 3DS, so it actually moves off the shelf at all. <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and you know what? I've I've seen commercials. I mean, we've seen I've seen commercials on TV. They're coming up uh, before Hulu uh, videos that I'm watching or other online videos. And I'm looking at it. It's like, oh, Star Fox sixty four in three D. Oh, Zelda, Ocarina of Time sixty four in three D. It's like I have a little bit of problem that real and even Mario Kart. It's like okay, yay, it's Mario Kart. It's what they called Mario Kart seven. Yes. All of a sudden, we're numbering these, but still, <laughs> it's Mario Kart. How much has it changed since the N64? So, so I mean, this is like, okay, you got your Zelda game. You got your uh, the Star Fox game. But they're all they're the recycled. same. Okay, they're in 3D no. if you even turn it on. No. no? I mean, I mean that's not I mean, a selling point No, for me. it's not. I mean, it's a buzzword, yes. and, we, and, and, yes, everybody's, in 3D. and everybody's right. getting over but 3D. I've played those games before. You played them before? Are you going to play them now on the con? No! No! <laughs> Even if they're coming right at you, the fairy, the annoying fairy is right in your face. Hey! I gotta punch you for that. <laughs> man. You know, you know, it's in 3D, man. I don't give it! <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost lost a clean tag. Almost lost a clean tag. I, I don't give a toast. I don't give wow! a toast. Wow! I like that. I don't give a toast. I like the I don't All give right? a toast. Yeah. All right, here's another If you're gonna release a 3D <laughs> handheld console... Then I want some new toasting games for it. Where's the <laughs> Where your toasting where's attitude? Where's the new games? We didn't see stuff just brought over for the Virtual Boy, you know? Nintendo's I'm never... I'm going to smack you later. Nintendo's... Hey, yeah, I evoked the, the Virtual Boy. I'm going to smack you I evoked the, the Virtual, virtual Boy rule, okay? I mean, seriously. Oh, God. I mean, the, the Nintendo has some freaking obsession with 3D. And, I mean, granted, I think... I think Right off the bat, they've done Let's all right because this is a 3DS. Let's but, move on. What, just because I said Virtual Boy? Let's move on. Virtual Boy. You know, there's a, there's a good transition here. Oh, yeah? I've got a good segue for you. Okay. I like You're the right. word. Good call on the segue. <laughs> calling out the segue. So, you know... Uh, I'm pointing <laughs> to this part. It's like calling your shot in baseball. I'm pointing, I'm pointing this way, and here's our segue. 
Exactly. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you know, Mike, um, there's, uh, <laughs> you know how we were saying that Microsoft is doing a lot of good things with, uh, with consoles what and online content and stuff? Oh, I did say that. I did say that. I keep, you know what, I, I, a side note, it, it, when we talk about Microsoft, how good they're doing with consoles, and then yeah. versus everything else they do, it, oh, yeah. they are really good by making me forget that they're Microsoft <laughs> when I play with an Xbox. Yes. You're ruining my segue. I'm sorry. Back to the segue. Interruption over. So, uh, you know what you can put on your Xbox 360? Linux? Hulu Plus. <gasps> yes, we can. And I do that. I do it all the time, Rob. Like pulling teeth. Like <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I, I we uh, we have uh, another new affiliate here at the Awesome Cast. Something I use, of course. You know, we had Rob. Rob and I were going crazy about the Drobo the last couple of weeks. But this is something I use, and I am a fan of free trials because I think you should try it before you buy it, especially something like this. Um, because I did, I did. Did you see if it's good for me? Like Rob, Rob, don't you wish you had a trial for Netflix before you started paying for it? And, and uh, I know, I know well, you they do like have it. a trial. Oh, yeah. you're, you're on the trial. You did. Yeah, aren't you really glad you're doing the trial because you decided it wasn't for you? Well, I did the trial, and uh, I just I'm honestly too lazy to cancel it. So I pay <laughs> oh, seven dollars a month to watch like two episodes of the IT crowd. <laughs> okay, you make me Please. so sad. <laughs> Okay, it's okay. That's why you should consider Hulu Plus. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I do. I do pay for Hulu Plus. We talked about a lot, you know, the positives and negatives of it in the past. But seriously, I think it's worth it for me. I'm a cord cutter. Uh, college students, I think it's going to be really good for a wrestle fan. I know you're out there at San Antonio. Uh, but you know, it's it's the place to get your stuff if you are too lazy to BitTorrent stuff. Uh, we can can we say that? Are we, you think we can say that? You can't really say that. that. No, no, we can't say that. Okay. Um, but everything's just there. Uh, it was seven ninety nine a month, and uh, you know, yeah, you get some ads. But my, my wife likes ads, and that's okay. And those Geico commercials, come on. Um, but you know, uh, great stuff like Modern Family, Thirty Rock, uh, watching The Office on there. And when you get to Hulu Plus, uh, one, you don't have that eight eight day delay that they're doing. I, I don't have to worry about if I didn't have Hulu Plus and I wanted to watch House within the week, uh, I. You know, I'm screwed because I don't have uh, Comcast. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff you're hearing in the news about the delays. It comes right up if it's a Hulu Plus program. Uh, and you have ability to watch it on your iPad, watch it on your on your, uh, uh on your Xbox, you know, I've been watching the Daily Show on my Xbox, on my on my you know nice 42 inch TV, and uh, I, I babysit across the street, and they have Direct TV. It's indistinguishable. It really is. Uh, you know, it looks just as good 3D. I mean, HD, not 3D. Screw wow. that. Uh, Hulu's too good for 3D. I'm saying it. I'm saying it right now. Uh, but, <laughs> but you can check it out. You know, see if it's for you. See if it's got the programs that you you dig. You want to go through all of Battlestar Galactica or all of uh, you know all of a uh, uh, Family Guy and, and you know all the other Family Guy spinoffs. How many of them now? Like ten. Three. Um, but you know you, you can check Three. all that out. Three. They have movies, the Criterion Collection, uh, Rift Tracks, the guys that used to do Mystery Science Theater. There's a bunch of those on there. Why are you pointing at me? I'm, po I'm, I'm letting you know, Chachi, because you need to know this, and you should try the trial. You get one week free. Hey, if you are a uh, have an EDU email, if you're a student, you actually get a full month free. So go check that out. We got a link over there at awesomecast.com. I got the site up so you can show the link, Chachi. Go, go, go show them. Show I'm them too the busy link. pointing show, at you. Stop pointing at me and show them. Point to the link that they can go. Support the awesome cast. Just try it out for free. Give it a shot. Maybe you like it. Uh, and that's all we ask. That's all we ask. Now that's the show notes. Oh, no. <laughs> there it is. Ta-da! It's all over the place. Start your one week free trial of Hulu Plus. There you go. Only $7.99 nice a month afterwards. That's right. I think that's not bad. Can not cancellation not required. They will automatically bill you, just like Netflix. Yes. Oh, yes, yeah. Just like I'm just, just, just like Rob with Netflix, and you know, hopefully, you watch. You know, hey, one thing I like with this, and this is kind of the you know, news or whatever. They really push the British con the British programs on me, and I love it. We went do they through. Have, do they have the IT crowd on? Them? The yes. IT crowd's not on there, but the lady from the, the girl from the IT crowd is on this one called Whites. Yeah. Uh, it's about um, you know, some is it about whites? It's about well, they're. <laughs> I actually, that's racist. I actually, I I only watched half of the first episode. It's a comedy about um um white people. No, they're cooks. 
They're <laughs> cooks. They're wearing whites. I think that's the point of it. I don't know. It's a British thing. Uh, Misfits. I, I really enjoyed Misfits. It's kind of like Heroes, but not hero-y. What if a bunch of delinquents got superpowers all of a sudden? Yeah, that would be hero. That's Did they put the Mighty Mosh and Power Rangers on there? I don't know if they put the Mighty Mosh and Power Rangers on there. Then I'm I, not I, paying I, for it. <laughs> See, and that's why he would have found that out with the free trial. Um, but yeah, <laughs> there's also one that the, the end of the booth at the end. Somebody was telling me about. I got I got marked. It's it's another it's another one that's supposed to be pretty cool. Uh, but go check that out. Anyways, back to go to go, you know what you move across the pond and drink your tea. I'm saying here in America. What the, what the hell? <laughs> go. <laughs> What did you just do? I have no idea. <laughs> what did you just do? Did you just kick me out of the country? I did. Is that what happened? I revoked You just your... revoked my America license? Yes. Your America, America license? It's called citizenship, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's, whatever. That's another whatever. reason why you're gone. Hey, you know, so uh, I got a story in here. I thought it was kind of interesting from a technical standpoint. You know, we talked about, you know, we had the guys on here with the iPad game. Uh, a couple months ago. Yeah, that game that I beat. That like, game that you beat. I beat the heck like out of. five I'm minutes. I'm telling you, next time we have a children's program on here, uh, we're not going to let you play the game until we start the show, because <laughs> then you'll beat it within like five minutes, because it's a kid's thing. You gave it to me before the show and said, here, try yeah, this like, out. I, I was trying to familiarize you with the concept, and you're like, I played it, and now we're on the show, and he just like has nothing to say because he's already experienced the game. Yeah, like, <laughs> I already beat the game. I don't know what you it's want. Like, what do you do? want from me? Uh, but this is pretty cool cool um uh <laughs> it's called machine machinarium uh it's an ipad game apparently it's converted over uh from the pc it's a flash game that's been around for a while on the web um and now thanks to adobe Ware and um, a manita design i really should have spelled like checked these beforehand uh they're able to move it over this thing is so powerful that you can only run it on an ipad 2 <laughs> but uh i see if they got a, a thing here i i, I there's some screenshots so I, you can't play the game i can't play the game i haven't i have a first generation but uh it, so i've seen the screenshots this thing looks gorgeous why are we talking about it I, I, well it's one of the top selling apps apparently how right much, now. how much is this app uh hold on i was just about to is rob gonna buy it are you, are you gonna, gonna buy, buy it, it? you have an ipad too sir I have a fleet of iPad 2s. <laughs> I can install it on every one. Uh, and then four, line them up and start playing them all together. Four I could. I would just surround myself with iPad 2s. <laughs> it's four ninety nine. Actually, Chachi, if you if you click that Machinerium launch at the beginning of the paragraph, it'll go to the uh, I, iPod or iTunes page, and you can see cool. a couple pictures. The yeah, App Store. Yeah, yeah. the Appy Store. Um, but yeah, Ooh. it looks it looks pretty tremendous. It looks like it might be one of those kind of point and click adventure deals. Uh, but, but yeah, it looks tremendous. I like point and click. They're very, headphones recommended. Please note that this game is only for iPad too. So you're already starting to see a little bit of the absolute is, yeah, there's a little bit of pictures for you on video. Um, I mean, it looks pretty tremendous and I guess it's doing pretty good. So, so there you go. Flash on your iPad. Whee! Sort of. Sort of. Um, if I do this really fast, it's like a flip book. <laughs> tremendous. <laughs> Ugh. What was that? Wow, that was a hiccup. I'm sorry. Wow. All right, so, um, so um, did you guys hear about the? Uh, apparently, Amazon wants to make the Netflix of books. Um, the Netflix of books. The, well, that's that's the sto- that's that's the how the title goes, but uh, it's a little that's more a than bad that. title. So it's, it's like book rentals. Is what it's uh, it's basically there. It seems like they're they want to roll books lending on your Kindle in with Amazon Prime. So that $79 a year that I pay, that gives me two-day shipping, yeah. gives me their uh, unlimited uh, video streaming for right. select titles. Uh, very, very, very select titles. Pretty That's damn cool. select titles. Uh, but still, I mean, it's something, right? I, I filled in a couple of things I would have had to order a DVD for, you know, with Doctor Who. You know, I'm already that kind of paid for a, a little bit. And, um, and, and you'll also be able to, and hey, we all got Kindle on some device. Even if it's a PC, you got Kindle, you know, and now automatically you're going to have a, you know, not every book is going to be in there, not brand new books, I don't think, but the classics, whatever they, you know, however the deals come out, you know, it's going to be very limited, I'm sure, just like our, our, our you know, so Prime Video. So what you're saying is I have to order Amazon Prime mm-hmm. in order to have access to this book flicks 
yes, service. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, it feels like it's just another perk on top of it. Pass. Pass. <laughs> Well, well, I mean, it's if you already buy, I mean, especially for work, I buy an incredible amount of stuff that I need in a very short. Oh, yeah. It, it's it's so. a bit for me. Like, I, I have it. I use it just because between between, you know, my freelance, I need equipment here and there. And, and I had it anyways. Like, oh, cool. I have video now. You yeah. Know? Yeah. They just get I mean, just like when they opened up the entire uh, video streaming library for Prime members. That only yeah. happened. Yeah. this last year and you take now they're just tossing this it's just icing on the cake i mean it's well worth it without all this stuff they're just mm-hmm. giving it away mm-hmm. and, and you know what it does though it introduces you to that service uh for instance with the video um you know i te- like i said I, I picked up an episode of doctor who uh that you know i would have had to get the dvd off of netflix um you know which is a, you know i'm impatient i'm not gonna wait two days um if i don't have to and uh it showed me, you know, I brought it up on the computer, brought it up on my TV, and it was, um, you know, I knew it worked. I knew it was really good quality, and I, and I really dug it. So when, like, you know, we had a couple episodes of something that's not on Hulu Plus, like Burn Notice, and, you know, we wanted to catch up with it, and I was like, you know what, we'll drop the two bucks on it. I know it'll work. I know we'll have a good experience with it. I'm introduced to the service. I'm more prone to pay that money other than, oh, they have streaming? Really? How's that going to work? Really? Two bucks? You know, versus... You know, what I'm used to downloading on iTunes, is that really going to work? You know, and, and it just it just opens that up for you. And this way, that gives people a reason to open up that Kindle app on whatever they're using and say, you know, actually, this is pretty cool. Actually, you know, it, OK, this, you know, I'm reading this old book that I've wanted to read. But hey, a new book came out. I know what the experience is. I'll be more apt to pay for that. Yep. Word. <clears throat> Word. Correct. So, Yeah. Thanks, guys. My whole point Thanks is, for the support. <laughs> my whole point is, I don't buy a lot of stuff on Amazon. Okay, yeah. So I don't need an Amazon Prime subscription. Okay, well, and that that would actually cost me more than it would save me in the long run. Okay, let's think. So let's, let's think outside of it. If this is worth it to you, think about what this does to the market for books. What much, does it do to much the market like for much? Books? What 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 does it do to the market for books? Is it commoditizing books? Any more than a library does, you know? Is this something people are going to jump onto? Is this going to get more people reading? Well, going the to... biggest problem you're going to find with this is that a lot of the um, major publishers are not going to jive with it at all. I mean, mm-hmm. they have enough problem with the concept of eBooks. They have enough problem with things going on the Kindle. The idea of mm-hmm. of renting a book temporarily completely like obliterates the bottom line of the amount of money that you make by publishing a book. So this whole thing pushes us back to a discussion we've had 50 million times about um, how a lot of uh, uh, authors are now self-publishing to take the middleman out of it. So it could be that this sort of thing, if we see, um, like, say, you know, Barnes and Noble starts doing this thing for the Nook and other people pick up on it and the publishers are never going to agree to it because they're just too big and kludgy to catch up with the way the market is going. You're going to see a lot more people self-publishing on rented books that you can get from Amazon. Yeah, and they be, you know, it lowers the barrier for them to check out a new book on an unknown author. It gives them a, a chance to get out there. I mean, you know, they're they're the big ones that are going to win on this. Just like they already are on the Kindle store cuz it is super easy to get a book in the Kindle store if you want. Josh, you yeah. can write scribble something on a piece of paper and put it on the in, on the Kindle store for 99 cents. I Try. can? You can. Yeah, he's like, uh, he's like, I just, uh, I just created a business model. Um, <laughs> Crappy books by Chachi. Chachi's, Chachi's scripts, uh, oh, Chachi's, available now. Chachi's crappy books. Chachi's crappy books. Um, but no, I mean, it really is. It opens up an option. And it's really nice, you know. I mean, because I mean, come on, big, books have been failing for a while. Right. So you know, this, 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 this gives somebody the opportunity. And you, you know, know I would... just like, just like any, any schmo can throw their stuff on. MySpace and and you know have an album and and you know dilute the market you know books is books are the same way and it's more accessible now so uh <laughs> she's doing the try she's doing the i'm gonna write a book face uh right now so <laughs> so uh samsung no, no. what what i i wouldn't write a book you wouldn't write a book no i've determined that no one wants to read anything i write in book form. What is oh, okay? This isn't like one to one to your blog or something like that, is it? Right. What? <laughs> I, uh, this isn't. This isn't like I'm looking at my stats and nobody wants to read my writing. It, no, my stats are pretty in, good in book form. Yeah, nobody I wants to no, read. Yeah. What if we took your blog 
and then printed that as a book. I don't. I still you don't, don't think that would swing? I still don't think people would buy it. I. You know what? You would be surprised what people buy. Uh, I think that'd be a fun experiment. When you finish your games in another five or ten years, we should do a Kickstarter for that. Five or ten years. I don't know how long it's going to take you. Wow. <laughs> it's a lot of damn games. Thanks. We, Thanks. Didn't we do the math one time if you did it at once a day? Yeah, I it was mean, like that's three it's years. like three or four years. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's a hell of a. You got, you got a long road ahead of you, sir. Um, all right. Samsung, Rob. I, Talk about failing at goals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's a failure. What is. I, oh, God. I hate this patent stuff. I absolutely hate this patent stuff. Yeah. I try to keep it out of the show, but this is. I don't think we touched on this one yet, have we? No, we haven't. And, and, and this now, is getting to be, I mean, you know, in tech, patent wars are just uh, just kind of a thing that happens because the patent system has failed and all that good stuff. But this yeah. is a, a patent war that Apple uh, is fighting. Usually what happens is, is people come after Apple and, and things like that about, you know, Google will come after Microsoft about search technology. And, but this seems to be something that has an incredible amount of merit and it's basically apple saying hey you know what the uh, galaxy tab 10.1 golly looks way too freaking much like an ipad <laughs> um yes and that's exactly it yeah that's that's just it um and uh so they've already managed an injunction in uh in the eu uh basically until further notice samsung cannot sell the galaxy tab 10.1 in the eu mm -hmm. um there was a court case in germany that was basically they they just ceased uh, the ability to sell it until a ruling was made, and a ruling was made uh, just a few days ago on September 9th, I believe. And there was a, uh, a consumer electronics show going on. <laughs> this was funny <laughs> at the time, and they had to come in and pull the Galaxy Tab from the show floor. Mm -hmm. They had working models on the show floor. I think it was what it was a day into it, right? Like they like people yeah. got to play with it for like a day, and they just smashed on the floor and said, "You have to, you have to take those away." Yeah, you, you, have, have, to, you, you have to make you, those, you those away. So, and now at this point, uh, there's also been a ruling in Australia uh, in which a judge said, plain and simple, that the Galaxy Tab is just way too similar to yeah. the iPad, <laughs> and that Samsung cannot. Do you have a picture of the tab? Sell it under I, I under the patent laws in that picture, picture, and I could. I just just bring up anything of the tab. We can zoom in on it. We have an iPad here, so you can kind of see it next. Oh, there's there's the display, and, and there's there. Do that uh, control uh, thing, control in the in the scroll wheel there on the picture, and uh, oh, let me zoom in. There you go. Yeah. There you go. But so, I mean, so it, you're getting the idea yeah. there. I mean, it's a tablet. And here, you know, I got an iPad Gen 1 here. The judge said I mean, there's more than one way to make a tablet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what he said. Okay. And, and I've played with this. The 10.1. Wheels has this. This is what Wheels has. And I've played with it. And now the iPad is very, you know, it's not a 4.3. It's like, you know, kind of, it's more squared than, than I mean, this is a widescreen format. It's very awkward to hold, I think. Um... I mean, what? It's got a black border around it. It's got it's got limited buttons versus you know compared to an iPad. You know, I mean, I, this is the best way, as people have seen it, to make a, a tablet. You know, it, it's the the limited way. It's the most form factored way. I mean, how many years have um, Windows been trying to do a tablet, then and they've just kind of failed at it. Yeah. Right. So, I it mean, it takes a lot of. Um... I mean, I, I, if somebody were to come to me and say, you know, I want you to make a tablet, um, and I kind of do, like, I'm not a, I'm not working at Apple by any stretch, but I do do industrial design for a living, and yeah. I have to make devices and things. And if somebody came to me and said, make a tablet, uh, yeah, a lot of ideas I would have would look very similar to, to the iPad. But it's really that the iPad has pushed the, the ceiling on on. Uh, tablet design so incredibly high. It really feels like I mean, it really feels like if you you went into computers to me like five five years ago and 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 you you said uh, you, nobody else can make a tower. Yeah, you, know, you right. can't make your computer in the shape of a tower. You know, mm -hmm. you can't make your you can't make your monitors look like a monitor. You know, I mean that's that's really what it feels like to me. It's like I, 
Is it because it's a new form factor and Apple somehow cornered the market on the patent and now they're cashing in on it? Well, I mean, what, what's happened is we've reached this really inter interesting point in technology where unless you start using absolutely new materials, like what Apple yeah. has done with the iPad, and one of the reasons that it is so aesthetically appealing is because of how simple it is. You're looking at an aluminum case yeah. with a glass screen and a button. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And if you, you know, you think about, uh, like, the best comparison I, I can make is, like, when was the last time you saw uh, a car made by, say, Toyota that looked exactly like a car that was made by Ford? It doesn't happen. But that's also because there's thousands of levels of detail in an automobile in which you can differentiate one from another. You'd be like, oh, the headlights kind of look the same, but you know. the wheel fairings are different or it has a spoiler, the windshield's a different size. You can't do that with a tablet because the parts of a tablet include one part screen, Another part it's the definition. to hold the screen. That's the definition. Another part button to turn it on. You know, you know what they need in this. You know what they need in this uh, to di differentiate the kickstand. Yes, kickstand. Kickstand. Well, hey, you know, the funny you mentioned kickstands because you know how uh, uh, I think HTC, yeah, HTC was differentiating themselves from the iPhone for a while. Kickstand. Yes. Kickstand. Kickstand, or you can just buy an iPad case with a kickstand. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, or that uh, was it that glyph on uh, on Kickstarter? Um, yes, get one of those. I actually, I, I do want to get one of those, um, or I'll just kind of take a piece of wood and do the same. But thing. I, I don't know. I'd say in all of the the weird patent stupidity that we've been seeing, uh, mm -hmm. patent in both ways. See, that's a pun. Um, <laughs> patent stupidity we've been seeing. Like this is one of the the most meritorious cases, just because. I mean, basically. Uh, Man, Apple really kind of did a good job on this, and they kept it really simple. And I've, I, I'd be really surprised if Apple, like you know, Johnny, I was designing this thing. He was like, "Oh, right, this is gonna be great because nobody else can make something else that's not like it because it's just a tablet. That's all it is." Like that thought process didn't happen, but it wow. incidentally, wow. good luck that's making a, a tablet good, that wow. is nothing like an iPad. Can we, can because, we go back man, to that accent? That was a tremendous accent. Yeah, can we go back to that? <laughs> if you need a, a Johnny Ives impersonator for your uh, cor corporate function, please contact it at the contact at awesomecast.com and we'll hook you up with Rob. Yes. <laughs> Incidentally, that's also my Keith Moon impression. <laughs> um, Do you own a black turtleneck? Yes. Sweet. Um, We're in. If, we got a new business here. There you go. That'll be my Halloween costume. There but yeah, I mean, tablets all have touchscreens. Your touchscreen is your first problem. Once we took away <laughs> buttons from handheld devices, they all started to look exactly the same. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm cracking up because I'm I'm just envisioning you at this party going around with sacks and a turtleneck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you like you like the MacBook Pro, do you? That it goes soft and the light goes away. You like that magnetic hinge, it's nice. <laughs> We need to do a promo video with you, <laughs> which is your white backgrounds and <laughs> wow, glory product wow. shots. It'll be amazing. It'll be amazing. I apologize. Oh my for god, me. it's all right. It's all right. Hey, you know this isn't a rundown, but I remember this, uh, listening to this know. earlier today. Uh, HTC might be doing something a little different. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know they're big on Android. They're big on. Uh, they're doing Windows Phone as well. On um, kickstands. They're throwing kickstands out there, like left and right. Uh, they uh, word is they're interested in doing some WebOS stuff. Huh. Um, luck. Good luck. <laughs> hey, you know, like they're doing Windows Phone. Come on. Uh, they did Windows. They've been doing Windows Phone forever. You know, they're used to pretty rough devices. Um, you know, <laughs> and a lot of people, hey, you played hey, Rob. You played with a uh, uh, a WebOS. Chilla had one at a party uh, a couple yeah. weeks ago. I mean, what were your impressions on it? You could shave with it. You could shave with it. <laughs> you know, it's I, don't, a, I don't know what it is about, like... Oh, right, because it's sharp. Yeah, there's, like, sharp one 90-year-old guy yeah. at at uh, at Palm who was acquired by Apple, or Apple, acquired by HP. Uh-huh. And they, they're like, you know, oh, we need to buy this one piece of plastic thingy. Oh, call up Jimbo. He has He has a friend. Who can source these <laughs> things? Because they're all, it's the Palm Pre, the first generation, was mm -hmm. the same kind of sharp. The Palm Pre Plus, the exact same kind of sharp. And then this thing that I had in my hand like two weeks ago, you could cut cheese with it. <laughs> it was that sharp? Why? Is that I'm a feature? Do you kidding. think that's a feature on the box? It should be. Uh, it should. Yeah. They sh it doubles as pocket knife. That's what there it should go. say. Swiss Army touchpad. And and it oh there's so many things where it's just a complete lack of attention to detail like yeah. the I'm gonna get real nerdy here you ready 
Okay. No, gradients. We need a nerd alert graphic. Nerd alert. Um, gradients. Uh, we, you guys know what gradients are, right? I, yes, I went to art school. Uh, sure. Uh, you know what dithering is? Dithering? Yeah, sure. Dithering. <laughs> Dithering and... Okay, for the crowd that doesn't, that maybe didn't go to art school and design and, and stuff like that, can you just go uh, quick... Dithering and... My my degree and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dithering and... Dithering is... Uh, uh, a really stupid way to say it is that it's the ability of a display to mesh things together to create gradients. And especially, this is really important when things move on a screen. So, uh, example of a display that has really awful dithering would be a display that when somebody is moving, let's say they're going into a shadow, you see these weird, like, suddenly something that was black is now, like, four shades of gray with these awful, like, snow cliff lines in it. That's an example of bad dithering. Mm. And man, is that display on that horrible, horrible tablet suffering some really awful dithering. And it's something that you don't see on something like the iPad. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's all about attention to detail and trying to create the best experience possible. And somebody at HP saw that and said, "No, it's fine. I mean, it's it's uh, it's like what is that, Bob? That's like a ten dollar display. Yeah, it's great. It'll save us a lot of money when nobody buys it." Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I and mean, you've seen HTC stuff. You think they can do a better job at that? I don't. Know. HTC has had a couple good devices. Um, and they've, you know, they've been holding pretty strong in smartphones. And even back when smartphone meant you were going to shell $800 out of your own pocket, they were still doing really well. So it's not to say that they're not going to come out with with something that's, like, adequate, mm-hmm. but it's not going to be anything that competes realistically. Like, I would be really impressed. Like, you know, of all the companies, so he's the, what, what a company could come out with a tablet that would compete with the iPad? Would you say it's HTC? I, I feel HTC comes out with more of a generic device that a lot of people like than uh, yeah. a device that really breaks any barriers. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think you're right. Um, yeah, well, I'm racking my brain to think of another company that would, you know, could could pull off. Could, is Yeah, I, I, that's actually a quite, actually question. Quite Who could come close? I don't think Motorola. We'll see what happens with Google. Not that Google is a real great kind of physical design company. Uh, yeah, nobody else is really no. known for their... No, but what, what is somebody, you know, that puts out a device, you're like, man, that's a slick device. That's a slick camera. That's like a flip... Flip cam? No. Um, Cisco? No. Yeah, not with Cisco. No, definitely not. Who's yeah? Who's doing slick devices? I want to spin off like the Xbox. I think I consider the Xbox a pretty slick device. I think that looks better under my TV than than everybody else in that generation. Uh, PlayStation looks ridiculous. Yeah, I, you know? I mean, really, no I mean, other consumer electronics manufacturer yeah, puts as heavy I mean, as a focus on design as Apple does. No, no. I mean, I mean. I, you know, uh, part of me thinks Sony maybe, but you know, Sony. I, Sony would do it, but it would be made out of really cheap plastic yeah, and yeah. some proprietary I, well, awful operating problem. system. You have the same problem with tablets that you have with PCs. Uh, you go, you know, for for several years, I've gone into Best Buy, looked at their towers. For the last ten years, is every tower they've made just looked like a giant hunk of plastic that could fall apart at any time? Yes. I mean, there's no metal in it. It's shiny plastic. That's what they do now. It's it's stupid. It's stupid. I mean, we got this old uh, white iMac here, and I think it looks better after how many? That's a 2006, and it's looking all right in comparison to uh, you know to that. The brushed metal, you know, you don't. Mm-hmm. It just it just looks like it's going to hold up. You know, you say, oh, the Apple tax, I'm paying so much more. I was like, yeah, but your computer's not going to fall apart after so long. That's what you're paying. I could take you know? my MacBook Pro, throw yeah. it down the stairs. Exactly. And, and, you're, seeing, one and you're seeing the same thing. I mean, I have a met, pe- hunk of metal in my hunk of metal and glass in my hand versus, you know, your your Android tablets are, are, are plastic. It seems, I don't think anybody's using brushed aluminum or anything you know you hate to pick <laughs> hate to hit pick chachi but you've replaced the both your phones at least once yeah you know, but, from uh, hgc from the chat room okay apple knows half their stuff will be shelved sooner or later so they make sure it looks good on the shelf there you go <laughs> see that's funny because that's a joke that's not actually accurate let's try that <laughs> yeah in your face market numbers what my wow. numbers of what? <laughs> stop, stop making fun of the viewers, Rob. We've had. I'm not making fun of the viewers. They just don't. I'm not. All right. Well, that's all right. That's all right. 
But on that note, I think wow. we, hey, everybody's getting punchy, so let's you, get out of here. You know what, Rob? Think, <laughs> go back to your corner. For some yeah. reason, I keep bringing up a page about can Miracle I, Day. Can I ask you about that light structure that's behind you hanging out? <laughs> the light structure? Hold on, light let me look structure. in my camera and see what's behind me. Uh, oh, that thing. Yeah. Where did that come from? That thing. That's like an octopus or spider that is, lamp. That is pretty curious. <laughs> Uh, it is actually um, a, uh, you know, uh, Ikea sells the desk lamps? Yeah. The regular standard foldy desk lamp. Is this is my desk lamp motion. <laughs> <laughs> is that just a bunch of them welded to a circle? Uh, so I mean, screwed together. There's a, okay. a ring of aluminum in the middle, but yeah, it's all handmade here. There's a, uh, actually a very fancy designer version that will cost you an insane amount of money. But we decided to make our own. And they're really great for things like T-shirt studio. We use them downstairs as well. Awesome. Yeah. I've been looking at it the entire show when the screen's on you. Like, I should be focusing on you and listening to what you have to say. But I, I'm distracted by the light structure <laughs> and, that's behind yeah, you. Yeah, at some point, you moved away from us, so we have so much of the ceiling now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I just kind of, like, kicked Hello. back. Hello. Here's, hey, I'm, I'm just kind of hanging out down here. All right. Uh, we need to work on our video framing. <laughs> um, well, hey, hey, you, hey, Rob, you're over Hi. at Cotton Factory. Let's give him yes. plugs. Live from the Cotton Factory. Live Rob from the Cotton Rita. Factory. <laughs> so, Rob. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got going on, Rob? Um, I have... <sighs> I'm busy, but I do have PodCamp this weekend. PodCamp! I can actually hear it. Special to the viewers of AwesomeCast. Oh, are they there? Are they there? Hold on. Are are you sitting right by them? Oh, no way. We saw the pictures online earlier. This is the big reveal. This is the first physical video. He's just walking. This place is so huge. No, He could, like, play hide-and-seek in this camera shot in the entire facility. Listen. This is great. Listen. What's that? Here's the new plan. <laughs> I love we're, how we're just leaving it on there because it's such yeah, a great shot. We're, we're going over to the cotton oh. factory. Okay. All right. You ready? To take one of those lights. Okay. <laughs> ready? Ready? There it is. There it is. Ooh. There it is, kids. There it is. Pod Camp Pittsburgh 6, the Ooh. shirt. Yeah. That's the big reveal right there. Fresh off the line. Wow. So those, Sweet, so those are the sponsors I'm going to wear, be wearing on my back for the next two years. All yeah. right. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, so we've got, um, you know, hand printed here at the Cotton Factory. So you can get your shirt if you come to uh, PodCamp Pittsburgh this week. Exactly. PodCampPittsburgh.com. Uh, pre-orders, general admission pre-orders are sold out. Yeah, you can't you can register do, You can register VIPs if you want to get a spiffy bag for 25 bucks. Let's just clear. Uh, but you can come the day of yes. and, and sign in. It's fine. Yep. It's uh, fine. Because no. not everybody's going to show up at the same time. Exactly. And we won't totally. turn people away. That's cool. And we need your your name for the, the head count. Yeah, that's all. That's so. all. That's all it is. We just want to know, you know, so we can throw the numbers out to our advertisers next year yes. so we can do the event again uh but yeah pod camp uh we're we're all going to be there we're going to be doing awesome cast live the last session on Where's thursday that's last year's yeah, last that year's. is last year's um on a stage this, on a stage it's going to be in the hub there's a stage wait the stage wait, what's that Episode 69. Episode, Episode 69. We're going to be on a stage in front of people. Nine. Pants may not be happening. I really... Somebody needs to throw in, uh, 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 their, something on the stage. Just anything. Yes. Really. You can say it. Yes. You can say Preferably it. a female. Yes. And I'm going to go for bra or panties. panties. Female undergarments thrown on stage. Yes. But not by a guy. I, I, I'm trying to think of the way to, to say this without somebody making a funny joke. That would be really disappointing. <laughs> I don't want a dude in the audience to throw Boxers. man panties on stage. Okay. That's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a female in the audience can throw her own panties on stage. There you that's, go. that's good. That's Word. Fine. Yes. Uh, and of course, we all have sessions. I know I'm, I'm doing the, uh, the. I don't have a session. Ten, you, well, you're doing the Awesome Cast with us. That's the only. You're, that's still yeah, kind that's of a session. session. You'll be around. You'll be around. Chachi will be around doing Chachi things. I'll probably take my pants off. I'm, I'm saying you're going to do an impromptu uh, anti pants session. We got that opening on uh, Sunday morning uh, on stage. You could do it on stage. <laughs> um, you should you should do the anti pantsing no, before the Awesome Cast. That way, no. there's only one layer away from panties, is all I'm saying. <laughs> For an hour, it will just be me walking back and forth on stage showing random YouTube videos with no pants. 
Perfect! That's, That's, That's a perfect great. way to start off Sunday when everybody's hungover. Uh, but I'm doing the uh, 10 things I learned from five years in, uh, uh, of podcasting. Uh, I have at least nine written down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> only a week only, away. Uh, only a couple of days. That's right. No, no, it'll be, it'll be good. It'll be great. I mean, it'll be a, there'll be a, a posting along with that. And also, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a demonstration of what we do here, here in the studio, but for you out there. Yeah. Uh, kind of a little primer. You. Actually, it's going to be a little bit. I'll have the software set up that we're going to use for the live cast right after in the next session that's all sunday for my stuff rob do you have any other sessions going on that weekend uh i did but now i don't apparently oh whoops yeah. um well hey there's an opening if you want to one next <laughs> <laughs> oh we can just talk about stuff Stuff. Give us a topic. Do you, anybody want us to do a topic? Just the panel, two of us, to first a riff on on Sunday morning. We'll do it. We'll do it. What's That's wrong? <laughs> the, the state of podcasting. The state of podcasting. It sucks. No. Uh, <laughs> don't do it. You uh, suck. Actually, that's what my, my session's going to be. What, you uh, <laughs> No, no, the, the, what we are talking about. Oh. Uh, Chachi, you're at Chachi says dot net. Yes, unsung, the latest episode featuring zombies. That's zombies. Zombies. Right. Zombie ladies. Zombie ladies. Yes. Zombie ladies. Uh, we have the creators and producers of uh, Evening in Quarantine, the zombie opera. Mm -hmm. And it's the greatest interview ever because I say two things <laughs> for an hour. There is, you know, there's so much that I did not get out there because we needed a four-minute segment yes. and I have an hour of interview. Yes. <laughs> it's just them talking about everything. Yeah. And it's great. I got a couple un uncuts there got there, uh, including them talking about running zombies and how they're BS. And, uh, and and some other stuff about about the nonprofit they right. use is pretty cool. Uh, I'm at Sorgatron.com. Check out everything else Wait. going on. I'm... Mm -hmm. Guess what I did this weekend? What did you do this weekend? <gasps> I officiated a wedding. <laughs> wow. So uh, I'm not kidding. He does parties and bar mitzvahs. No, I don't. At Shachi says never doing it again. <laughs> never <laughs> doing it again. No, never doing it again. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, shout out to Chilla and Carla, yes. friends of the show. <laughs> Recently married. By me. By this guy. <laughs> I did it. That means it's completely, like, not legal, right? No, it's legal. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's legal. We followed, okay. We followed I didn't all, mean to call into question. We followed all the laws. It's <laughs> legal. And also, happy birthday, Chachi, this week. Oh, yeah, happy, happy birthday. birthday. It's the only day this week that I'm not doing anything. That's right. That's right. I'm not doing I can't even pull you out for a birthday dinner, can I? I am not I better doing leave it. I'm anything. just going to I'm just going to come to your door with a pizza. Like and and, and a bow on it. Happy well, birthday. I mean, and this week is so busy cuz we have all this podcamp stuff going on. Yeah. And yeah. we have all this other side stuff going on. We got the shows tonight, podcamp volunteer meeting tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Podcamp starts officially Friday. I mean, the the meet and greets Friday kicks off Saturday. <laughs> we get our drinking on Friday. Yes. Like, we made the pie. <laughs> but, I mean, um, yeah, so it's the one day this week that I'm not doing anything. I think, there's, I think Roy, and I think he might have been serious, there might be a turntable FM room at Alpha Lab <laughs> that night. Oh, but um, I, I went to the Dropkick Murphys last night. Yeah. And that show lasted for forever. Mm -hmm. There were six bands. The show started at 5.30. It didn't end until 11.00. So I got home at like eleven thirty. I'm just exhausted. All right, and uh, and we have your session for podcast. The Chachi presents ten things I hate about Scott Bale. No, there you go. I'm giving up on that. You're done with that. You're yeah. done with him. It's not even worth the time. No, it's not. All right, guys, you can check us out. We're here at live.sorgatronmedia.com every Tuesday, seven p.m. Eastern. Come check us out. Join us live like these fine people in the chat room, like Bobby F. J. Town, Willick. Will uh, thirteen, uh, like that's my name. Hot Wheels, uh, Juggalo John was in there. Funky Dung. So what's up, guys? Contact us. Contact that awesomecast.com. Excuse me. Uh, seven two four two five a cast. If you want to drop us on uh, on the hotline and hear your voice, it's up at awesomecast online on Twitter. You can uh, find the show on iTunes, on the Media Fly, Roku Box, Blip TV, and YouTube. Thanks again to DJ Cutman, DJCutman.com. Check them out at MagFest <laughs> if you're going down to the DC area uh, at the turn of the year. Turn of the yeah, uh, and uh, and that's it. Hey guys, this has been the Awesome Cast. You guys have been our awesome audience. Why don't you, my friends? Have an awesome week.